evolution, uh, the types of evolution, the traits and uh, groups. That is what this talk is about. So as you know, the, the, the two kinds of evolution, uh, you know, uh, generally speaking, one is called divergent evolution, in which as the term say divergent, you are diverging, right? Uh, one species split into two or more offspring. Usually it's two, right? Because of the allopatric speciation through vicarians, right? So the true evolution is uh, in which one species is split into two or more species that is called a speciation event or lineage splitting or cladogenesis. Lineage means the branch of a phylogenetic tree that splits, isn't it, at the, the inter, in, internal nodes. Or cladogenesis, the, the clades are being, uh, you know, uh, being produced, right? Cladogenesis, the clade is basically uh, descendant, isn't it? So that is called the divergent evolution, which is a true evolution, you know. So the purpose of phylogenetic tree is uh, to reveal the divergent evolution, right? So therefore, any similarity is due to their shared ancestry. So if you define certain groups based on traits which are resultant of the divergent evolution, that is called the homologous uh, uh, traits, then the groups are natural, like mammals. You know, you are defining based on um, ma a mammary gland, which is a shared derived character then that mammals are a natural group of course it is a natural group right so divergent evolution gives rise to homologous structures and homologous sequences so in morphology it is uh, structures while in uh, uh, you know genealogy or genotypes it is sequences in the dna sequence it is called homologous sequences so both are because of the divergent evolution you know so the similarity is always due to the shared ancestry the relationship in biology is always due to the ancestry, isn't it? So like a parent to the offspring. So shared ancestry, some characters are shared because of the uh, ancestry, ancestral pattern of the evolution, right? Not because of the horizontal gene transfer. That is a different concept, right? In, especially in the bacteria, that the genes can get transferred horizontally, not vertically. Vertically means from parent to offspring. Horizontally means unrelated species uh, unrelated, uh, you know, families can have gene exchange. One example is uh, uh, transposable elements, you know, or another example is whenever we get a, re a, re a retroviral infection, then the, you know, the genome of the retrovirus can get integrated into our genome, you know, so that is another problem with that, right? So the divergent evolution give rise to the homologous structures or sequences, as I told you. Now, the groups that define based on homology is known as monophyletic groups. So the term monophyletic is uh, coming repeatedly in uh, dialogues on phylogenetics and phylogenetic systematics or modern systematics. Because modern systematics is based on phylogenetic systematics, you know, the cladistic systematics, isn't it? So in which only these monophyletic groups are named, you know. So what does that mean? Monophyletic, one phyla or monophyletic means like from one parent, you are getting all the offspring. So that means it's basically natural group, not artificial, right? So these are the groups based on the homology or homologous traits are called monophyletic groups. These are the real groups, you know, monophyletic. Now, as I told you, this homo, you know, this uh, divergent evolution uh, that is basically the speciation, isn't it? So different kind of speciation, if you can remember from early on, we did this discussion on uh, various forms of speciation, especially two types, allopatric and sympatric. Then we also have parapatric and peripatric, right? Allopatric means through vicarians or geographical barrier, speciation through that barrier. And it follows primarily the neutral model of evolution, right? Adaptation to the new environment through adaptive evolution was not a cause of speciation, but it's a result, right? So then sympatric speciation means there is no geographical barrier, but the same. Sympatric means same parent, you know? So basically the, the population is congruent, there is no barrier, but still certain, uh, you know, individuals prefer to mate with uh, their, uh, you know, the near uh nearby partners you know or some other thing like for example polyploidy right so when disruptive selection result in adaptation to different ecological niche in two population within the reproductive distance right that is another way of the sympatric population so what is this uh, disruptive selection means 
uh, again we have already covered this topic disruptive selection also known as diversifying selection is like this earlier it was like a you know a bell shaped normal distribution but later extreme of you know types got selected the middle point is not selected you know uh, either too dark or too light not the gray right so there is called disruptive selection and later what is going to happen is that this individual mate with this individuals while the other extreme mate with other extremes so these are known as uh, you know assortative mating that result in speciation that is what is happening in sympatric speciation other types of selection which we already discussed are stabilizing selection and directional selection like in giraffe right before after uh, the neck is increasing isn't it yeah, so the disruptive selection is one of the, the mechanism through which, uh, you know, this uh, particular sympatric speciation can happen. And we already discussed sympatric and allopatric, then peripatric and parapatric. What is peripatric? Peripheral speciation, you know. So some peripheral group gets severed from the original population and rare genes move to the fixation, you know, like polar bear versus the brown bear. So it can also be produced by founder events so some members gets introduced or even just one pregnant individual of a population gets introduced for example to an island uh, you know and then that is that establishes its own a uh, group for example uh, uh, you know uh, a bird gets introduced to an island you can think of that so that is called founder events again that is a type of a peripatric you know parapatric speciation means there is a niche this is an ecological concept so niche can differ along the environmental gradient hampering the gene flow and thus creating a cline, you know, the gradient along uh, this environmental gradient, uh, the, the cline is basically, you know, so, uh, yes, yeah, so in, in the environment gradient, uh, so individuals prefer to mate with its immediate neighbors, you know, so that is what you call the parapatric species. One example is the ring species concept of the girl, Laros genus, right? So that it's immediate neighbors, it can mate, but there is actually two extreme in which they cannot mate, right? So there is an example of this parapatric. All these are example of divergent evolution, the true evolution, but there is another form of evolution called convergent evolution. So evolution of similar features in unrelated lineages, for example, uh, you know, the wings of birds and wings of butterflies, quite unrelated, though uh, you know, function is same, locomotion to fly, isn't it? 